Okay, we're going to go through how to join data that's only in Kafka with data from a database. And this is generally what our architecture is going to look like. We're adding two components, Debezium and Materialize. Debezium is a change data capture service that connects to your database and listens for changes to it and translates them to events in Kafka. So essentially, in order to do a join between a database and Kafka, we're first streaming the database to Kafka. And then materialize is the second component, which consumes all of the events from Kafka and lets us write a SQL view that it maintains in real time that is essentially a join and aggregation of the data from the database and the data from Kafka. And then our downstream services, whether that's an internal service or a web app or something else, are able to access the materialized view as if it were a Postgres database. So they can query it or they can receive a stream of updates from it in a number of different ways. So the article that I'm referencing here, which I'll, I'll link to in the description, has a lot more context of why I do it this way and some more background on Debezium and Materialize. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the how part of this, where we're going to go through a demonstration of setting this up using this e-commerce demo repo, which is useful here because it's generating data that's only available in Kafka, page views, and data from a database, users. And we're going to be able to join the two of them on this common attribute user ID. And so the e-commerce demo repo has everything packaged up in Docker. And there's a bunch of services that we're going to start up front that would normally be already running in your infrastructure if you're thinking about joining Kafka in a database. So we've got Kafka and Zookeeper. We've got Schema Registry. We've got MySQL, um, which is where we have a, a shop database with a user table. And we've got a load gen script, which is really just producing a bunch of page view events into Kafka and writing a bunch of updates to the database to give us a lot of data to work with. So to get started, I'm going to clone the repo and go to the root directory. And I already have Docker and Docker Compose installed on this VM. So my first step is to start Kafka, Zookeeper, Schema Registry, MySQL, and LoadGen. So this will take a minute to download and build the containers. You can get some tea while this is happening. I'm probably going to fast forward. Okay, so we've got the five containers up and running. And our next step is to start Debezium. That's also packaged up in uh, Docker. We can actually go and look at the configuration in the Docker Compose YAML file. The main thing that we're customizing here is we're sending it the necessary config to connect to Kafka and Schema Registry. And we're exposing port 8083 to the host. So let's run that. This will also download and build the Debezium container. Great. Debezium is running and it's not actually pulling from our MySQL database yet because it doesn't know the credentials to do that. And we send Debezium those credentials by making this curl command. This is how a lot of Kafka Connect components are configured. And here you can see we're sending it the database credentials and a, a few other config fields which are explained in the article. So as soon as we send that, Debezium will start to connect to MySQL and stream changes to the database over to Kafka. So our next step is to start materialized. That's also in a Docker container. The config for that is fairly basic. It's got a couple customizations and it's exposing port 6875 to the host. So that's done and you connect and use materialize as if it were a Postgres database. So if you already have Postgres installed on the device where you're doing all this, you could just run a psql command like this. But since this VM doesn't have Postgres installed, I can actually mzcli is just a container with the Postgres CLI installed. So it gets us 
the Postgres PSQL CLI open and we're in materialize. So from here, we're going to start creating the config in materialize to tell it how to connect to Kafka. And we're creating two sources here. The first one is for the page views where it's just raw bytes that we will have to cast to JSON. And the second one is for the users table from the database and it's using Avro encoding and the schema registry, which is nice because it's giving us the columns and the types of the columns Those will be pre-created. So if I say show columns from users, you can see now materialize knows what are the column names, what are their types, and whether they're nullable. And if I say the same thing from raw page views, we can see it's just got a data column. So in order to cast that raw data to JSON and then extract those fields as their own columns, mm -hmm. we're creating this intermediary view. And even after we create this, no events have been ingested from Kafka because we haven't materialized anything. This is just a static view. So it's being used more as a, as a sort of template to organize our SQL. We could have also put it in as a subquery here in our materialized view. So this materialized view is where the real magic happens, where we are joining users and page views and we're creating an aggregation by is VIP and then by the channel of the page views and the hour. So this is just kind of an arbitrary view, but it's the kind of thing you might use as a dimension table to create a number of different visualizations. And it's the main thing it's doing is it's demonstrating how it's doing a join and letting you write some arbitrary SQL to format that output. Okay, so we've created the materialized view. And now if we select from that, you can see we've got a lot of data coming in. And if we repeat the select, you can see the data is changing. So at this point, we've got a real-time updated view that materializes maintaining. And we can read that out in a number of ways. The uh, simplest is just to do a poll, P-O-L-L type of query from a web app or service where it's just repeatedly making that select style query to materialize. These queries are very cheap because the work to compute the view is done as new data comes in, not as queries are made. The other two ways to get output from materialize are to actually stream or push the data out. So one way to do that is with the tail command. There's a good demonstration of how to do that. I've linked to in the article. And then the other is we can actually sync the data into a new Kafka topic. So in that case, we're each change to any of the rows in the table is creating a new event in a new Kafka topic that another service can consume from if we have that kind of architecture. So this is just a proof of concept. There's a lot of additional work to running this in production, like thinking about handling schema evolution and the deployment and maintenance of Materialize and Debezi. But I just wanted to walk through this mainly as a demonstration of how this can be done with these two components. And if you're interested in using Materialize more, you can always join the Materialize community at materialize.com slash s slash chat and reach out if you have other questions.